Well, they already. Tene te mauri ka piki ake ki te rangi e tūho nei. He rangi atua, he rangi tipua, he rangi takito. Kia fiti, kia fiti ko te matauranga. Kia tau, kia tau ko te matauranga. Whaia, kia tata, puritia, kia mau. Haumi e hui e, tae ki e. E hoa, no mai, no mai. Uh, no mai ki tenei, o tenei hui topa, tenei webinar uh, o toitangata. Uh, tenei momo kura reo, uh, mā tātou ngā kaimahi um, kei roto i te uh, kori, kai oranga, uh, hawora, uh, mā tauranga pia. Um, ai, no mai, no mai. Uh, tenei te mihi kia, kia koe, um, mai ōtaki ngā. Uh, ki tenei, ki tenei kōrero. Uh, e tātou mā, uh, ko tai mai nei a uh, uh, kuroho wereta, uh, no kura rehia. Um, uh, e tai mai nei, uh, e hui mai nei, uh, ki te kōrero ki tōna huarahi reo Māori, huarahi toi. Um, ai, ona mōma mahi uh, ki tēnei au uh, Māori. Tēnei te mahi kia koe e hoa. Um, uh, Toku pātai tuatahi kia koe. Um, well, he... Uh, to to kōrero, uh, pia ki to huarahi reo Māori, to huarahi um, toi, kei ako e te kōrero. Kōrero mai. Right. Oh, e te tutahi. Uh, mā koe mihi atu ki ako e renei. Uh, nau i tūpera ai to tātou hui. Uh, no rere tēnā koe. Uh, o tira tēnā koe te katoa, uh, ko tai mai. E are are mai nei, tēnei wā, ki tēnei hui topa. Ai. A uh, ko kuruho, wera te tōku engua, uh, i te puaka hau ki ōtaki, uh, ki raro i ngā pai maunga o Tararua. Uh, ko Ngāti Raukoa, ko Te Ati Awa, uh, ko Ngāti Toa Rangatira, e te hiu o kuiwi. Uh, Reira, yeah. So, kei ōtaki au e noho ana i tēnei wā, e noho haumaru ana, uh, i roto i tōku uh, miru miru. Uh, e pātai pai tērā, Renei. Um, so yeah, kia ora everyone, and thank you Renee for opening us up with your karakia. I love that karakia, and I've been using that karakia a lot uh, since I learned it about two years ago. Um, so yeah, karakia tino pai mo te And uh, the part I is, you know, how did I get into my reo? How did I get into toy? Uh, and it all started, I suppose, you know, since uh, where I was born, where I was raised. Um, in a household, uh, my mum, uh, Deborah Buston, she's an artist. Uh, so I live, I grew up in quite a creative household. My father, he's a real practical uh, building builder kind of guy, and so sort of any challenge uh, wasn't too, wasn't too hard. Uh, you know, we could we could do it. Uh, so that was the sort of mentality that I grew up with. Uh, we had the house down the road um, from Makura, um, that was always like not normal. You know, it, had a, it wasn't square with a letterbox. And so for a long time, I was really ashamed about, you know, bringing friends back home because of the, yeah, the irregularness of my whare. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the kura down the road was uh, a kura reo rua, and it had like a, a whakapono towards hahi katorika. Um, but inside there, there was a really good kayako. Oh. To go and go to Kurarerua, and um, have a family who was really creative, and always, um, you know, breaking uh, sort of a normality, you could say, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, in sort of the art space. And yeah, I uh, I was in Otaki studying at Otaki College, and it was not really an education part, like a pathway that I really enjoyed. So yeah. my mum, she was like, Kete pai son, uh, you can go to Tuana Morokawa and I support you and whatever you want to do. How about you do, uh, how about you study at um, Mahi Whakairo, Māori Design and Art, the tour who was called. And so I was like, okay, kapai, and applied myself to that. Really um, took to it and really enjoyed the, the hands-on mahi and working with wood. It just uh, worked in well, sort of fitted in my personality. Um, yeah, and so that was sort of my introduction into Māori uh, mahi toy. Mm. So did you, um, 
had you left school early to go to Tuanunga or Rakawa? Oh, true. Yep. Oh, that's yep. awesome so, that your mum had that had that um, belief that you could, you know, most parents kind of think that that they should finish their, somebody if you should finish school first before they go off. Yeah. No, nah, not my mum. Uh, she, she was, uh, you know, because for her, like, there's, there's learning inside the experience yeah. um, that can be had and going into different environments yeah. and, and learning and, yeah. and engaging and mixing with other people, yeah. you know. Uh, so having all of that exposure um, at a young age is, I think, quite beneficial. Yeah. Um, and it was for me. Uh, my mum also had, like, art projects uh, growing up with councils or, and different group across the motu and so often she'll take me out of kura for like two weeks at a time three weeks at a time and then if the the kaka would come to her and be like oh where's guru ho she's like oh he's he's uh he's helping me so he often i was like my mum's uh right hand man even though i was like 13 years old or 14 years old i was working with uh, groups of people yeah. um, at that age with my mum and and supporting the kaupapa yeah yeah mm. So when you went off to off to Rokawa and mm. you know you entered into your into your study, into your hurahi there. So tell me about what that what that opened up for you. Oh, it, it showed me like um, the level of um, quality um, within Te Ao Māori. Mm. You know, like the yeah the beauty of Te Ao Māori. And seeing everybody coming to Otaki um, to study at Te Wānanga and it was, a, it was like the place to be. Mm. Uh, it was real nice to mix with other people in Upper Hapu uh, because I'd been in this Hapuri for, you know, the entirety of my rangatahitanga. And so to be able to meet other people from outside of the Rohe was fantastic. Uh, and then I... You know, I witnessed amazing artists, you know, working inside the whare for kairo and inside the whare pora, the weaving whare. Mm. And so, yeah, I was just inspired by all of the different people that I was working with. Uh, but at the same time, I was really uh, frightened as well by the academic world, you know, having mm. to write assessments and, and some standard in a certain way to write it. Um, that's an area that I didn't enjoy, but I enjoyed the, the assessment mm. of like, making a uh, popo or tipu tipu or taiaha and, and applying myself to um yeah na taonga or mm. te toi and learning all of the puraka as well which i really enjoyed and like later on you know it just stayed with me and was yeah. most of the most of the learning um in the real or was it sort of as you kind of went along as you went up each each tomata each seringa uh kao tinuing o te wā Pākehā. Mm. I think that's just the most common language that everyone's speaking and uh, especially some of the the kaupapa and the, the content of, of what they were trying to explain I think uh, it was easier for them but especially in the real classes because it's mandatory at te, reo, uh, te Wānanga Rokawa to study te reo Māori yeah. and so as you progress uh, through the rūmaki uh, yeah, it's all te reo Māori. Mm. Yeah. Uh, in the whare for kairo, uh, it was just a real, it was a real rua. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I guess being at Rokawa, it's like, uh, or any of the wānanga, talking about the assessments, like you've, it's kind of like two, you've got two kura going at once, two two, two types of, of schools going at once. You've got your, your academic world and then you've got your ao Māori world and trying to navigate that, eh? Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, at that time, I, I didn't know anything, you know. I didn't even know I was living in a bicultural world. Yeah, and, and I and I was already applying a bicultural lens on to how I was thinking and how I would move and operate. Yeah, um, and that that came later on with experience and you know just being here in our society, and learning that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, tell me about your purahi reo and how you kind of got to where you are right now in terms of yep. your mahi and your your yeah. world. Yeah. It's a, it's a fantastic story. I love I love telling it and I love sharing it. Um, because if you know every time we share our stories, there's something in it for someone else to to learn, or mm -hmm. there's inspiration in it, in it for them. And uh, for me, it was you know, kohanga reo and kura 
and then Te Wānanga Rokoa, and also I studied at Otaki College, but it was like an option, you know, it wasn't immersive. Uh, and then I had this little, this I like to call it like this period of exploration as a rangatahi where you sort of just, you know, not doing much, but you're still exploring and gaining experience. And then it was when I left Otaki when I was 20 years old, I went down to uh, Nelson Marlborough Institute of Technology uh, to study to be a ranger to work with Te Papa Atafai. Yeah. Uh, and it was a big shift, you know, like moving my whole life and um, moving my focus and changing career path from, you know, this young Māori was going to be an artist and then all of a sudden becoming a, a ranger. Um, so it shocked a lot of people. But yeah. inside that space, I once I joined the Department of Conservation, there was a huge demand for um, Māori, tangata Māori and whakaaro Māori. Um, and, you know, it was, it was written into legislation through the Conservation Act and um, around like commitments, their commitment that they need to hold to Te Tiriti o Waitangi. And often you'd get like called up and it was the dial of Māori sort of mm. uh, situation that a lot of us uh, find ourselves in. And I was happy to fulfill that role um, because it was an opportunity for me to push uh, past my comfort zone. Yeah, and also like stand in front as a, as like a, I suppose a leader and also have the, as an opportunity to, you know, use Te Reo Māori and let people hear it and be inspired by it. Um, and also, yeah, it was just another thing that another, a toda, another string that I had to my bow, my bow that I could bring um, to my mahi. And, and, and embellish the mahi and bring in different um, thinking into how I was working. And so I was with the Te Papata Whai for seven years. I worked in Taranaki, in Ngamotu, and worked in Kirikiriroa. I also worked in uh, Te Tarotika, Maui, Coromandel. Uh, and I had a really good experience, a good time with uh, Te Papata Whai. And during that time, I sort of just slowly just sort of um, chipped away at learning a little bit more Māori, but not very intense um, towards it. My main, um, the, I think the main rautaki and the main uh, way that I maintained a good connection to my real Māori was through my mahi toy. So understanding um, what rako were good for a student uh, carving and then like or like finding the origins of that rako and then where does that rako live in the Māori name in the rako and then there was all of the pūrako that came with it and then the karakia that came with it so I might not have been practicing with reo but I was learning about whakatauki and I was learning about karakia and I was learning about uh, atua I suppose and then also having a job where you're out in the environment all the time as a ranger uh, incidentally you you are exposing yourself to uh, the environment and I was inspired by, you know, the the plants, and then I would learn the the common name. I'd learn the botanical name, and then I'd learn the Maori name. Or actually, I'd learn the Maori name first, and then try to learn a botanical name uh, afterwards. Uh, but yeah, all of that sort of just, um, you know, combined together to sort of add on to and scaffold into what I know uh, today. It was um, the sort of the big shift for me uh, was when. I left to Papatafai and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm leaving this organization. I'm, I'm really satisfied at Kua Ea, you know, and I've had a good, good run. I'm going to try something else. I went and started with Kaumihira or Tamika Makoto, working with Auckland Council. Yeah. And I started up with them uh, in the regional park space, working out in Hunua, um, and all the way out to Afitu and some of the most amazing parts of Auckland as well. And in there, I sort of started to find my, my way inside that, in that realm. And I was uh, moved into a senior manager role and uh, started to incorporate uh, sort of more cultural competency into the work that I was doing and providing for the team and making a stand for yeah. others in the team. Uh, even though it wasn't in my role descriptor, but I sort of was holding people to account and supporting people and uh, doing it in a real um, uh, supportive way where they felt supported and safe and that was that so when I was in Auckland that's that was a big shift because you know everybody is in Auckland and there's a lot of things happening there 
and um, I was a bit afraid to go to Auckland or a bit dubious because of what I had heard people say about Auckland, you know, coming from a, a little town and they said, oh, Auckland. Um, so I was like, no, bugger that. I need to discover uh, Auckland for myself. You know, I need to like figure out what's there um, for me to learn and, and I'll make my own opinions. And so I went there and um, yeah, I, I had a flat and then I had a, um, a, la a girl, a lady um, called Rosie who wanted to study with me uh, to come into the flat. She wanted a, a flat, like a household that was supportive of um, Te Reo Māori and she was a Pākehā and she was really keen to learn Māori and mm. so she wanted to create a language zone or like a space for her to talk Māori and um, so that was sort of interesting because I felt really challenged uh, because she was learning Te Reo Māori and she was able to study Te Reo Māori uh, full-time at Te Māna Māotoro while I was working and here's my reo which I thought was about here uh, and then I could sort of I was observing her sort of getting really good with Wetereo and I was getting a bit grumpy in myself. And mm. because she was she had, she put in time to, to learn it. And I think that's a real big uh, discussion on, and, and you know for us as as people of Aotearoa, you know, that like um, and I think we'll all find a, a similar situation where we might be challenged like that. But what I did is I used that as a sort of an inspiration for me to actually go, okay. Uh, I need to upskill myself further in Te Reo Māori. And so I studied it. Um, I enrolled myself into Kurapo, um, you know, twice a week at Te Awanu Yarangi in Manukau. And I was there for a year. But that was, that was, that was, that was like enough for me to go and go, yep, I love it again. I, you know, I'm learning more and I'm learning more and it's really exciting. And I was going to Kurareo and going to a little, the Noho Marae and really applying myself to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the homework that Ranganui was sending, uh, sending out to us. And um, yeah, it, it, that was cool. Mm. Yeah, that was kind of how I rediscovered it through uh, Mo and Māori, um, showing me that it's actually, you know, there's heaps more to learn. And yeah. it's like a, it's like a manga that's massive. And, um, you know, we get to the top of that, to that tihi, and then you look over there and there's all of the oh, Ranga about marama. No, you know, the maramataka or waka or taiao or atua. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's so much to learn. Mm. I was just, um, you know, listening to your quarter around being, you know, being working in the taiao and then coming and working for the council. And and I hear that you had an opportunity to um, learn the learn kupu through your applied mahi, especially in the taiao, like to no way mari, just to be able to mm. noho and, um, and learn about each rako and about each each man or that type of stuff. But I get I think I think about other people who are, who have different types of roles in their jobs or work in different sectors um, that perhaps have mixed opportunities to be able to do exactly that, like learning through the mahi. What's your kind of fakaro on on that? As your mahi is your waka to be able to open up that door for yourself. Yeah, like um, when I reflect back on the mātauranga that I have, which is a small amount, I'm like surprised that I know that information. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, it's just through osmosis. It's like through being out there and you're learning. Yeah. Um, and I know there's different learning styles and different uh, people learn differently. Uh, so I, I really enjoy it. It's hard to read a book of, um, for me, I find that really challenging to read a, a plant book and then try to remember all of the plants. But I can go into a plant book now, you know, after working in the tile for 10 years and been out and I can rattle off all of the plants and, and stuff like that. Not all of them, but ones that I have a particular interest towards. It's kind mm. of like the, you know, the application of like, or just being like being in Kohangareo, that it's the, um, you know, when you're nohi nohi, that you're learning through doing, and then later on in your life, when you actually start reading and stuff, those kind of um, experiences come back to you right from nohi nohi up to, you know, um, being older. And I guess it's the same type of thing as being in it practically. So when you go back to it and you read about it later or you watch something later or you're with someone later on in your life, that learning comes back to you, mate. So, yeah, yeah can't wait. So how did, how did you get on to... Um, 
the next part around having being brave enough to create something from there yeah i i love the word create you know in creation and 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 all of that because it just comes from your your and then like it, it, it's made like it's manifested so like from carving it's it's like here's a piece of here's a rako here's some timber and and you you conceptualize it and then boom it's there it, phys it physically exists and that's for people to look at or they can do what they want of it mm. so i love i love creation as as in, in like in itself and um weaving the same arts everything like there's so much uh, forms of creation and uh while um Rosie and I were flatting in, in Omana and in Maraitai, uh, we were playing Kimu um, Pākehā, like this game called Articulate, and we started to play it into the Māori. And it was like a matter of getting a kupu uh, from, from the deck of cards and then trying to explain and articulate their kupu into the Māori. Whakamārama te ra kupu, te ahutanga te ra kupu, to um, ngā kai tākaro, the people playing and they would have to try guess it based off your maori description and then they would have to go back with the english word so it was like this real long way to get there it was fun yeah. but we're like why don't we make a game like this and then we did a quick research like oh now nah, someone's probably already done it you know uh yeah, okay so then we did like yeah we did we did a, some research and we're like oh but nah and then it was it was challenge you know it was it was weird because we thought oh, that's such a good idea how come no one's done it and so we sort of teamed up and made a commitment you know that we wanted to uh you know support the revitalization efforts that are yeah. at play and and add to them um through through takaro and through those through the through that beauty that's created when people are, are learning through play because mm. we were having such fun with it and we were learning we're like, okay, we can do this. We can incorporate games into the Māori. And uh, we created that, like, our mission and our possibility was to have a bilingual Aotearoa. It was so, it was so grand and large that it, it freaked us out. It was also enough to think, like, hey, I'm not capable of doing that. I can't do that. But um, it was through, like, you know, like some of those sayings, like, Mate tini, mate mano, karapa te fire, or just like with everybody contributing, we will succeed. And so, like, if we all um, put our minds to it, or even just manifest that and create that possibility, um, you know, one out of a thousand people that I tell might go and study te reo or might uh, start improving their reo Māori, which is going towards their possibility. Um, and so, you you can have that cause and that impact in somebody by saying that. So we're like, okay, we're, we're going to make a board game, crazy. And then I was like, no way, I, I'm not, I don't have enough real Māori to make a Māori board game. I was really struggling, had a bit of a, you know, I was questioning my, my ability and my, I suppose, like, do I even have the right to make a board game, like a Māori board game? Because that's for like Scotty Morrison. And, and I thought that was for those people who, who do make resources. That's not for me. That uh, that was totally not my lane. I I will do wood carving, weaving, and I'll go in the bush and and stuff like that. And but yeah, no, it, do, it doesn't have to be like that. You can just change lane whenever you want. And and I we just feel like okay, we're gonna do it. And uh, that was yeah, like two and a half years ago. I, I forget now like the exact times, but we started working on um, on the board game Kopapa and we started to draft out what that would look like how it would work um the mechanics and like inside making a board game like it's easy to make one at home and draw it up um but then when we took it out into different environments everyone's like oh this is amazing can i get a copy so it was like oh do we just draw heaps and get the printer gun and cut heaps of little cards out or do we actually take it to like a another level where you know there's a huge desire the demands there you know the feedback that we're receiving is like please keep doing it um we're like okay there's 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 something here we need to you know feed that hunger that that we're, we're seeing 
And um, yeah, I've got a little slide of just a few pictures and stuff of me, of just the process that we went yeah, through. Put on, put on. I'll just share that. Uh, Yep, so um, Kaupapa is the name of the board game. And it was created by uh, Rosie Rim as well and myself. Uh, but not just us, because I, I like to say, like, it is all of us that have made this. And, like, and it's not uh, Te Reo Māori belongs to, to us. And so we just, we've just um, listening to our friends and stuff, and they were, like, really keen on us to make a board game. And so we, we are humbled by the experience and really happy to be you know about to share us uh this is a picture of maraitai and it, we were actually sitting around uh, and um i was living at the regional park because i was working with the council so i was really lucky to live at uh Manawatere, i suppose the one of the the pa of uh, ngaitai kitamaki the dream, and, uh, dreams yeah and i was living there and we, we were there, and, and me and my mate, yeah, we were there and just having a good time. But that's where the sort of orokohanga and the idea and the concept of Kopapa was uh, born. born. Uh, this is what it looked like. So it had a couple cards that Rosie made. So we sort of went like, oh, tūroa, mahi, tapu, tapu, wahi, ingoa, and heaha, like random name, place, object, action, and then nature. And then it was well, like, what's a good name for this game? Let's call it Kopapa because it's got different categories. And then you can see on the on the right, the bottom right there, that was a bit of flannel or a bit of linen. And we just drew like a Nautilus shape shell with different tiles. And that's what we played with for ages. That's how we got the sort of idea of how the game would run and if it was even viable to to take it further. Then the sort of the continuation process, like board game after, like board design after board design uh trying different versions uh like versions with a wood cut so making uh, uh cutting out some lino and then making a press and then doing multiple versions like that and then printing them onto something uh right from the get-go we were like committed to um uh a sustainable for card or sustainable practices so it was like a, this has to be made in a way where it's sustainable it's got to give back to Papa Tuanaku. It can't take too much away from Papa Tuanaku. It's got to also instill into others uh, these practices. So by them, um, you know, using the board game, they're like, oh, why is it like that? And then the questions are started. And then they're like, oh, that's why it's made like that, because it's da 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 So that was always a challenge. Um, you can see me sketching out on the bottom right, just like some pākati and some high high lines. And, and it was real challenging, sort of working with an elliptical shape, because it's not just a matter of, like getting a circle and going around that sort of gets it sort of steps out uh but we we love the the shape of that that board game and it really spoke to um nature really well it had a lot of sacred geometry in that in that shape and yeah it was real maori and i could see how we could incorporate and embellish and fuck um maori patterns into it and so yeah those are early ones then we started working on cards and, and really pushing ourselves. These are some original cards. Uh, and they were like just hand done. And uh, it was fun. Uh, also to try to get all the different words into, do you see the bottom right picture? Uh, you've, you've got to try to get all the different words into the cards and you don't want to be copying and pasting all the time. So you use this trick on InDesign called uh, data merge it's a bit like a mail merge so we're figuring out all of that stuff too you learn like after work 10 o'clock at night trying to figure this out and then always having a deadline while pushing like making deadlines i've got to get this done and uh we actually our our deadline and the reason why we made these cards is because we were invited to um participate in um uh, indigenous games expo in otaki at the maori land hub and uh that was that was really cool because they they supported us and paid uh paid us to go down there and, and present our our idea and that was sort of like oh this is real and we presented it and everyone loved it and so we're like continuing on 
this is uh, us, you know, because during this time we were enrolled in different classes and stuff. So I would take mine to uh, the Kurapo at Te Awenu Yarangi and um, to Kopai Tua Ono. And uh, you can see us like after, you know, after we had our kai, they would like bring it out and, and have a game and just, uh, because we, it was rumaki, it was really good rautaki for us to engage as a, as a little ropu and, and have fun. So that was, that's huge. That was, that's um, very fundamental, I suppose, the amount of times that we played this with people. Um, so we can get their feedback and, and that process around, you know, the game and the gameplay and keep it exciting. And that was through that was the development of, um, you know, what we have today. Um, so that's like a massive blowing up version of the cope up board that we have. And, uh, we had it blowing up so we could scan it and then send it to um, a graphic designer. And um, yeah, it was like when I was saying earlier, like I don't have the skills to do that, but I, I realized that we just work with people who do have the skills. Yeah. And so we're like, um, we teed up with Hemi Kelly, um, Aroha Tamihana, and just, you know, like just meeting people and exposing ourselves and putting ourselves out there. like. I just messaged him and I was like, hey, do you want to like, you know, you don't know me, but hey, do you want to like help us with a QA, Mahi? And um, then he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, cool. We told him about the co and then and then we met up and then and that's sort of that's how we we wanted to make sure that the kupu, you know, and and in you know, in like the the game was full fully bilingual, that it could be used in kura, and it could be a good example uh, of sort of like how you put the kupu Māori on the left and then kupu pakeha on the right and and also it was challenging though to you know for me anyway to look at how you translate um all of those kupu but Hemi done a great job and then aroha tamihana um, from tauranga uh, from my more creative uh, she was our graphic designer and we just we approached her on uh, through instagram through her mahi and we, we seen her mahi and we're like that's cool and um yeah we we, we we're continuing to work with aroha and I'm, I'm still working with Aroha on other games that we're making. Um, and so, yeah, it's a real fun project. So I like to like conceptualize it and create like some drafts and then we can like, you know, work on it together. So yeah, this is like a bit of the ropu. Um, and then sort of, you know, all our hard work sort of amounts to this game here. And, and then people, it looks like a pizza box and it does. And, um, the reason why it looks like a pizza box is because it was good. It was a way to try to get our costs down because uh, our commitment to sustainability meant, you know, making it an Aotearoa. Um, and there's not much um, board game manufacturers in Aotearoa. And if you're trying to get a box made, it's like, yeah, here's a template. Uh, you know, use one of these dies and then this hopefully your game fits in it. Um, but we really love the, the sort of the feel of the plywood. Um, print it, it gave a, a sense of quality and it gave a sense of um uh, i suppose really a, a sense of like aroha and manaki to uh what the game is and what it is for aotearoa and all of the kupu and and the patterns that are on the uh, that are in the game and on the board you know uh well looked after and uh, and held up high yeah. um because if i was to carve this you know if you'd be carving it on wood or something similar. And so we thought that the rigidity of the plywood was nice, but then it also forced us to find a box, you, you know, that would house that. So, and then hold the cards and, and all of that. So yeah, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's easy to come up with the idea, um, but it's like, it's about finishing it is the hard thing. Yeah, I was, I was just yeah. going to ask, um, yeah, how, at what point did you go? I've completely committed to this. We, we like, we've we've already you know planted the kakano. We have to we have to see it through. I don't I don't know, but I think I, I I had moments like that often, where like it was just the design the board was like a massive achievement, and then it was like we have to find the kupu. It was another achievement, and then it was, it was just like big widow after big widow, you know just constantly being challenged around this mm -hmm. and uh and now it's like 
there's even more challenges because people in Australia uh, really want it. And, you know, our whanau in Australia want it and we have to figure out how we get it to them, you know, and trying to lower those those freight costs. Yeah. And, and all of the logistics run behind that, especially in the back end of, a, of like a Shopify system. And it's like there's learning all the time. Like I, you know, a year ago or two years ago, I wouldn't have said, you know, I know how to use Shopify and, and how to figure out shipping rates yeah. and, and put in those uh, commands in the back end of Shopify. But, you know, I figured it out. My mate, he's like a computer scientist. And I was like, bro, can you help me? And, you know, so we call on, um, we call on our, on our community and our friends to, to help us yeah. um, with this stuff. And yeah. Oh. Uh, and then um, there's so many people were interested. You know, this is, um, this is the Rōpū, some of the people from Te And mm -hmm. I went in there one day uh, to gift them again. I was like, I love your guys' work. And um, thank you guys for your support, you know, to what to us as um, Kura Rehia. And, um, oh yeah, by the way, Kura Rehia is, our, uh, is the name which we thought would make Kopapa under because it was about um, the Kura, and the, like the treasure, and like also like, learning and then like they're here through like leisure and fun and, and play and, and games and recreation um so it was like the pursuit of learning through fun the pursuit of learning through fun so yeah uh we i went in there and just to say kia ora to, to them and for all of their mahi they do and with you know without actually um you know marketing this it's, it's just about being authentic and and keep doing what you want to do and um you know i'm doing this whilst you know managing other stuff and so it's, it's always nice to just be able to seize the moment and 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 do do this sort of stuff so we went in there and, and we had a game and yeah caught this photo but it's just sort of one of the many interactions that we've had you know through making the board game and now people see me as a board game maker you know but yeah. i was like you know a few years ago i was like no that's not me and then people were asking me to do webinars with Toy Tangata. And I'm <laughs> like, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, take on Nao and just doing my thing. I think it's really important to, for, for others. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, my, my, my message is that, yeah, I, I, I just want other people to, you know, realize that moment, you know, and that feeling that they have of maybe uncertainty or when they're comparing to others and just go, actually, um, I can be whoever I want to be and I'm going to step into it and really, um, you know, be em empowered by that and uh, look at how we can keep growing or keep growing the passion or the, the possibility that you want to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, you know, so now my movements that I'm doing and, and what I do, I feel like I'm always standing for uh, Te Reo Māori some, in some way or another in mm -hmm. the mahi that I do. And it's, it's really... Um, the board game is just a little product of that, hey, because I'm just like really for like um, people to engage positively with Te Reo Māori and, and my, my stance and my approach, especially like it's just to help, help others and guide them safely and, and, let, and let them make mistakes, you know, and then just aki aki them back. Mm -hmm. um, so they have positive experiences with, with it and, and not a negative one because often, you know, and far too often, People have a, a negative experience when trying to learn or pronounce uh, kupu Māori and then they get, sh um, you know, scared off. Um, and But as uh, as I suppose as uh, tangata Māori, our, our obligation is to support yeah. others um, to learn te reo Māori. Um, that's my that's my whakaaro way. You know, that doesn't mean it, it's, that's how it has to be, but that's that's what I want to do. Mm. And so that's that's the way I move now. And I guess, um, you know, as we know, te reo Māori is this, I mean, you know, it's always, it's always been there for us, but for, you know, for some, you know, in, in, in varying degrees, but I guess for the general public in the last, say, five years, it's just seen this te reo Māori take off as this thing that's right in the forefront of our society now, which I think is really awesome, and, and, and so it should be, but we still have that kind of whakamā, and you've kind of touched on the answer to my pātai, but we have got a pātai around, like, what role do you think play has in in people's whakama around the deal yeah good good question and i think that's um you know um why we sort of 
did what we did um, and make this board game because um, we could see at our classes, at, at the places we were going to learn to do Māori, that there were always that the student, the tawira, um who was a bit whakamā, we just had a different personality type. And they would like sit back and not say a lot, but through games, uh, it really removed the um, the barriers of whakamā and of, of like being scared and afraid to make mistakes. Um, it, moved, it removed that barrier of like trying to be correct all the time of mm -hmm. like, hey, that's not correct with that all. It's actually an E, it's not a key or it's an R, it's not an or. Um, but, you know, when playing a game, when you're playing a game with a group of friends, it, it's a very opaki situation. Um, and it's like, you know, kote mea nui, you know, it's just ka rere te reo Māori and kei te whakamārama koe ngā hotango te rā kupu and kei te ako ngā kupu hau. And yeah, that's the main thing that people are just uh, giving it a go and then they're not, they're not judging each other. And then when they're laughing and when they're playing and when that, I suppose, that play energy is... Um, you know, tapped into. That's when like neural pathways, and you know, there's a lot of science and stuff around that, but a lot of neural pathways, neural pathways are like created, you know, exponentially. And it's like you, your, your ability to learn and, and absorb new kupu is just, you know, multiplied mm. uh, in that space. And you don't know it, you don't know what's happening, but it, it's there. Mm. So that was like another great, great reason for more of us to make more games. And um, people, you know, we, we hosted, um, this picture here was from an event that we had in Umipuya. We took the board game back to, um, I suppose, the iwi of Ngaitaiki Tamaki because that's where it sort of flourished, the idea. Mm -hmm. So we were like, let's go back to Umipuya. Let's go to Umipuya. We had a, a mutual friend there, Marama. And um, yeah, we're like, we have, we want to make a, 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 like a wānanga or a little hui for everybody to get together and have a fun, have fun with Tango Takaro, talk about Whare Tāpere. And um, so you've got like um, Takoha and you've got um, Charles Royal there and you've got Widamu in there. And so Widamu Sarich and you've got um, Jerome Kavanagh, Jane, uh, Jamie Watson and um, Aroha Tamihana and her partner. And so, yeah, this was like right at the, the seat of what we love to do you know like it was right there like um to bring people together have fun and inspire others to make more board games or in engage with uh maori tanga in a different way because it's quite like formal usually like it's real formal it seems like you yeah know, that's the like kind of how we grew up hey it's quite formal yeah yeah and i think that uh, a lot of you know and i know charles has done a good great job at like revitalizing our understanding around tapere but it's tapere and 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 I think, yeah, it had a huge role in um, Māori society in, in the old times. And, and, it, and it needs to be brought back in, you know, and a lot, a lot of emphasis needs, emphasis needs to be put back on it. And you can see that now with, like, Sporting Z and, and a big shift into, like, play mm -hmm. and, and a lot of other organisations knowing and trying to understand, you know, what play is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, my widow was just, yeah, everybody, if you've got an idea, like, yeah, make it happen and draw it out and, and then find someone to help you and just go for it. Mm. And in saying yeah. that, we've got a um, partai uh, from some of the kaimahi that are, that are watching this webinar. What were, and to, to overcome those wakaro, I've got an idea, but I, you know, I'm not quite sure what to do about it. What was your biggest highlight and your biggest setback around this journey? Oh, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Mostly backs, just highlights. Uh, what was the highlight? Um, one of the setbacks was, um, you know, just trying to, uh, like all my cousins and, and my friends all want a free board game and I can't give it to them because it costs too much. It's like it, it costs money to make one and I, and so, uh, but like in, in Te Ao Māori, like it's like you really want to be able to provide that. And I felt like I haven't done service because I can't provide a, a free game to everybody. So to all of my whānau and cousins um, <laughs> watching, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, um, but, uh, but we're going to incorporate a, a model or some sort of thing 
some sort of transformative model into how Kurarehia runs, where we can set up some sort of donation process, you know, where others who cannot access these uh, games, who are not fortunate to be able to purchase it, will have the puti at a fire. You know, it's sort of like a, a it's like a pass it on type of thing. And yeah, that's one setback. A highlight, a highlight for me was um, uh, when, when I ring up people to say, hey, uh, hey, Wudamu, hey, how's it going? Hey, um, you want to come to an event that I'm organizing? And he's like, yep. And then I say, hey, Takoha, you, would you like to come to an event? And then, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I ring these guys up and they, they like, they like come, you know, and they come to it because of the kaupapa. Mm -hmm. It's kaupapa driven and they, they are passionate about this mahi. And so I was, um, I'm thrilled, you know, and excited by all of the, I suppose, love that people have for this uh, mahi. Mm. And, and for me to just be included and wrapped up into that, um, that ruruho of, of Takaro, you know, and to be included into that group because it wasn't a, a field, of, it wasn't something that I was in, you know, I was in the bush carving wood, but now I'm like, and I'm inside that realm. And so that was a huge highlight. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and so for you, yeah, for you, I mean, you, 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 you talked about it a bit, but um, for you and your next phase of your life, what has this opened up for you to be able to create for the next steps? Yeah, I think it definitely makes it um, easier when you look at like, when you go in all creative and you've got to look at like, the process involved you know there's it's like you come up with your ideas and then and then it's the process of like actioning them and having like timelines and all of that and i mean that that type of structure works really well you know and sort of in our world that we live in mm -hmm. um but for me like I, I felt confident to just sort of like leave and resign from auckland council i was like i'm leaving and i'm gonna hang out with my family what yeah. I want to do now, after like after the first uh, lockdown that we received, um, I was like, what I want to do is I want to move home. I want to work on the land. I want to help my mum. I want to help dad. I want to help sister. Mm -hmm. Because I reevaluated my values. And I'm like, it's not about making money or pursuing a, a huge, uh, like a career path for me. It wasn't about trying to get to become the mayor of Auckland Council or like the, you know, the big manager. It was about having fun. I looked at it and I looked at the negative impact that money had on, on my well-being and the stress that it had caused. Mm. So I was like, okay, to play. I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign. And I gave like two months notice to my boss because I was good, good like that. I wanted them to find someone else, you know, mm. to fill in my space. So I knew as soon as I knew, I told uh, my, my old employers and um, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know. I knew I was going to Otaki. And I had some putia saved up and I was going to build a little house, which is behind me. And um, just really like, really like no sort of uh, fear or no care but in, a, in, a, in, a, in a reasonable way, um, mm. you know, to just really take the leap and try something new because I'm like, at the end of the day, I feel like I wasn't, you know, I'm not going to probably go cold or hungry. And as long as my my mum and, and my father are good, then I'm I'm good. I'm I'm good um, through their well being. And so I made that decision to move down here. And when I sent an email out to everybody saying I'm leaving and this is what I'm doing and I'm pursuing my 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 ness, you know, it was just like uh, people were inspired by that. And then I received different emails from different people, you know, wanting me to join their team and stuff. So all of a sudden I had like four different options to choose from and then I was in a position of like negotiation where I was like actually no and actually yeah I'm keen on that and no and so like this is how you know I'm quite keen to just work 16 hours a week and that, that's car play then I can build my house and do that and I can feed my whanau still and do the things that I want to do and travel and do wananga and work on kurere here and so that was like finding a model that worked for me and it just just came naturally 
but it came from taking that leap that leap of sort of you know that jump off the edge it yeah. was scary especially leaving like a, a permanent role you know during covid times where there was so much uncertainty and, and people were losing their jobs and i was mm -hmm. i was resigning i had recently bought a, like a um, a camper van because they were real cheap people were leaving the country so i bought a camper van and then i was like i just spent like two months or a month just driving around you know with me and my partner and um, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Just like living, living the way I wanted to live. And there was no sort of expectation on how to be or how to behave, uh, you know, socially, as long as I'm, I'm, I'm behaving. Yeah. And, um, oh, I'm not getting jealous, bro. I'm not getting jealous. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, I've, got a, I've got another part right here. Uh, thinking hmm. of like I say, who don't know where to go or start or pursue an aspiration, what advice do you have for them? Because you've got to have the sort of, elements of bravery within you but for some people they've got to dig a little bit deeper and i guess or you know um get some for hair out of yeah. their way so what type yeah. of advice do you have yeah and uh a bit of uh I suppose context as well like when i was young i would get my sister to ring people up because i was too shy to talk on the phone oh, yeah. and she'll pretend to no, be me not. and um yeah i was very shy it took me a long time to, you know, get brave and I suppose understand who I am and mm. be thankful for who I am, what I look like, what I sound like. Yeah. Um, but for rangatahi, um, you know, wanting to find, uh, for you all you rangatahi out there wanting to find, you know, like what you want to do. I think um, for me, I remember um, just like having an interaction with somebody. I can't remember like when. Or, or where it was but I, it was about conservation and uh, I didn't like the sound of it but um, what I didn't I didn't know about it and uh, I was presented with an opportunity to volunteer and like volunteering means you work for free and this is me like a 19 year old like volunteering and it was only one day a week you know I was um, still on the benefit so I was like oh I'm doing something and I'm doing a bit of carving and stuff didn't really know what I wanted to do but uh that volunteering experience was amazing I did like maybe three months you know just one day a week and like by the end of it I felt like a full-fledged ranger you know like I was like I knew heaps of stuff and I knew about trapping pests and I learned about uh, planting trees and fencing and, and all of the little freshwater species that live in the in the in the wetland and I was like oh that, that's really cool and uh I didn't know I wanted to be a ranger then, but I think volunteering is a really, really uh, awesome way to test something out. Mm. Hey, because you can try it and then you can you can leave as well. You know, there's no big obligation to to mm. stay in there, uh, and there's no reputational uh, risk. You know, so give that a go, and also remember that there's like a huge community around you, and also we sometimes feel like there's no options around us but uh we, we are lucky and fortunate to live in a world where we have access to information like readily you know as soon as you want it and um it's about being smart and knowing how to access it and uh tapping into you know different media platforms because you can say whatever you want you know on social media and be known for it and then people will come and ask you to come for it and uh, you know come and deliver that and so you like uh that uh German girl Greta Thunberg, you know, she's yeah, she just had like a vocado, you know, and, and she's you know, she's got her her opinion, her perspective, but she she made a stand about it and just said, hey, this this is what I believe in, you know, and causing huge impact and change. Positive. She's amazing. She's amazing. But you think about it, like she didn't have like a huge uh, academic background. She was just had an idea and a vocado and, and made a stand for it. So uh, yeah, there's like a rangatira and everybody, you know. And um, yeah, so um, tap into like social media and like really promote promote what you want to do. I think this yeah. is really cool. And on that sort of, you know, whether rangatahi or pakeke rangi, um, your going back to, you know, our real journey and the, the different waka that we, that we can use to um, learn real through, through the mahi that we do. If there's somebody who's sitting within their sector, or within their job, 
whether it be you know within health or education or, or, or whatever and they, they want to be able to um, be brave enough to open up that world of real Maori learning for themselves you know what's your kind of advice um for them you know, we've got our kura pō and all that type of stuff but i guess it, when you're if you're a full-time worker or you know you're got a different mm. kind of situation what are the different type of um, so the question is make? how do people within like a in certain industries and different sectors um, they want to learn to do Māori, but uh, it's hard because they're working and stuff. Yeah. Is that what you're sort of saying? Yeah. Um, I'm quite, uh, I've come from like government and I know that they have obligation mm. to, to te reo, or te tiriti and, and then inside that is te reo. And so I uh, got better at, um, yeah. you know, being bold and requesting from my manager and going, it wasn't even, a, it was never a no. How dare they even consider that, you know, like that. But I'm like, do you, I wouldn't have to go into like, you know, what's your commitment to Tiru Tiru Waitangi? And, you know, do you, do you support me in, in you know, learning Te Māori? It was just like, hey, I want to learn, um, I want to go to this kura reo and um, wherever it was in that time, Rotorua, Otaki. And can you guys pay for me? Can you guys pay for it? And also pay for my time away from work? And they're like, yep. And and you just have to ask. And because you're only going to get a few responses, yes or no. Mm -hmm. Or you could do some sort of hybrid thing where you uh, pay for it, but you don't have to take leave. Or you take yeah. your way, you know, um, two hours a week, you know, to go to a Zoom session run by one of the many training, trainers. And in your for Carol, that's um, obligation and practice. I don't, I don't know. Uh, obligation, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a fancy way of um, answering that. Uh, yeah, I think it's one one way, one mm. way, one way that um, employers can can show their support is by allowing their staff members uh, the time mm. to to pursue that um, entitled knowledge. Yeah, and I guess at and, the end of the day, it's they're investing in somebody who's going to be feel better, enjoy work better, enjoy themselves yeah. better. Yeah, I think for yeah. private sectors and stuff, it's, it's a different sort of story. Um, but you've got a lot of private sectors and stuff uh, uh, being proactive in the in the you know bicultural space. Yeah, yeah. And and showing really good uh, initiative, mm. and, you know, and around cultural competency and cultural safety. Yeah. Oh, fine. Mm. Have a card on, on all time. Uh, yeah. Well, I um, I just realised I hadn't gone through all the slides, <laughs> yeah, but uh, right. yeah, I think this is the last thing. So you, it's, and we already talked about this, uh, the benefits of play, and where we can play, we should incorporate it into like so many aspects of our lives, mm. and be really harikoa and and just real chilled about things, and 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 make things like gamify your environment wherever possible. Um, we do this anyway, a lot of us, but try and incorporate uh, the gaming and Mataranga Māori into that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but that's that's all from me. I really appreciated um, the opportunity to to talk and share my story, and and you know it's not just about uh, Kaupapa game, but there's so much um, that's happened in the past, um, you know, to allow us to get here. Mm. from our ancestors, you know, laying down um, the whenu and the whakapapa and, and then creating that whāraki for us to, to be supported on. Mm. And then, um, you know, just uh, to, you know, more immediately, my hapuri and my mother and father, my, my sister, my partner, and all of my friends and my community and my networks that I have, um, through to the taiao that um, has inspired us and has continued to nurture us and provide for us. He oranga taiao, he oranga hapuri. And so, um, yeah, this is a real privilege. And I, I really total call the mahi that Tangata is doing as well. And uh, thank you, everybody. Kia ora koutou. Oh, fine. Oh, fine. I've um, really enjoyed your kōrero today, Ihoa. Um, just kind of bringing, just bringing the kōrero out, you know. Um, I, think, I think back of the stories that my own dad, told me about what they used to play 
because he grew up um, rurally. And, you know, Pōtaka was it. Or, you know, those real, mm. real simple, um, real simple games that the kids just gather around and play with each other. And and I guess sometimes we're just trying to, well, we're just trying to bring those those things back where kids feel safe and feel happy just to um, play and learn um, in an environment. Um, and I I just randomly thought about um, a, a quarter that I had with a other guy um, just at the beach, you know, a year ago. And he was from Europe and he said, gee, we don't play enough. And Europe um, play is such a massive thing. Um, and here we don't play enough. And so I just thought about that conversation while you were, while you were speaking that um, perhaps we don't, you know, perhaps we don't play enough. So, you know, um, what do you think about that one? Yeah, I think it's some families, not, not, not my family growing up, we did not have game nights. It was work you, you outside. Didn't. <laughs> it was work, <laughs> take trees and, and do all sorts of other stuff, which I'm really thankful for because it's good work ethic. Uh, but, yeah, I know other families have game nights like, all the time. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's really good. I've seen, I've come into those family households and um, they're so, like, positive and, and lighthearted. And I think, like, it's a real good uh, modi and, and a good ehi that's, like, coming off that play environment mm. yeah. and um that just exudes positivity and then creativity from that mm. and yeah that, that's the benefits of play oh the games i remember were the serious ones like like bingo and and yuka they got a bit too serious <laughs> yeah yeah i play i've been playing this uh oh i discovered a game called cub or kub and it's a scandinavian game and it's like three thousand years old which we got which we that might that it's few, quite a few thousand years old um, and it's a lawn game. So you play it on the lawn and it's, you play it in groups. And it, it requires like uh, skill, you know, with your, with your throwing. And um, yeah, it's really good. It's really competitive and collaborative as well. Um, so yeah, when, when, when looking, uh, when you guys are looking to make uh, games, uh, think about how is it collaborative? Is it a collaborative gameplay or is it competitive gameplay? And think about like, how would uh, Maori society and, and what sort of structures would have existed in the past? And how can you incorporate like Atua Maori into the mechanics of the gameplay? So the mechanics are like the, the movements and the steps when you draw a card and what happens when you draw the card and how is it exciting and what, what makes you interested to go back and play that again? What, what are the, the things mm -hmm. that keep you going into it? It's because uh, you could have a whole lot of content and a whole lot of information put in a booklet and you have to read for like a hundred page booklet. Um, that's one type of game. You know, it'll be real heavy with information. And you've got other games which are just like real fast moving. And uh, and so if, you, if you're really interested in um, the types of board games that are out there, uh, you can check out those um, like game um, cafes, board game cafes. And there's quite a few around. And so you oh. go in there and they have a group of people that will like facilitate the game. The great thing about it is uh, sometimes board games are quite expensive, but you get to experience and play these board games without having to buy it. So you get sort of try it before you buy it sort of thing and you get to like um have a good time and you can get a burger some kai and then you can play with your friends or you can meet your friends at the, at the cafes the board game cafes so there's some in auckland and wellington um and it's a really good way to look at if you go there have a look at how you can make it a multi game have a look challenge yourself and how you could like use the mechanics of that and then incorporate my into that okay, okay. awesome awesome and just listening to like the different Purahi that you've been on, that it's okay to change lanes. Um, the waka, whatever waka you're on, you're able to create your journey for yourself. Um, yeah, all of those things. Really, really awesome corridor for our whanau that are watching. Um, and in this hui that we're having at the moment, um, really the, the hua that we want from it is, is about how we can learn, how we can access, and how we can create pathways for learning real through our mahi that we're already on um, and you know making it part of our lives rather than going external to to what we're doing already which is which is a big a big um barrier for some of our whanau so the kōrero here is perfect for that type of stuff so kia ora and i'll just close us with our with our karakia and that's what i say Thank you.
Kapoe Hua Namahi Namahi Tenakwe.